In this video, I'm going to show you five very quick and very simple transitions inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Before we do though, I just want to say that this video is sponsored by Motion Elements. More about them later on. The first transition is going to be the white flash transition. And in order to do that, we're just going to go into effects, search for levels, drop levels onto the first clip. We'll go towards the end minus one frame. So we're going to go to here. So if I zoom all the way in, we're not at the point where the clip transitions over. We're one frame back to the left. And we're just going to pull that all the way to the left until we get a really overexposed image. Don't worry, I know this is completely blown out. It's overexposed, but it happens in a flash. And that flash is supposed to be overexposed anyway. So we're going to create a brand new keyframe on that. Then we'll go three frames to the left. And I'm just literally just using the back arrow button on the keyboard to control this. So one, two, three. I'm going to pull the number back up to 200. You can adjust this, but it's generally good. It's a rough gauge, that is. And then we'll go back on ourselves maybe five or six frames to the left. And we'll reset back to 255. So we're slowly ramping up before we whip up into that exposure effect. And now we need to transition out of that. So to do that, we just drag levels onto the second video clip. Go to the very beginning, pull the exposure to a really high number, so around 50 or 60. You may need to change it in yours depending on the footage. And then we'll go five, six, seven, eight, ten frames to the right and pull it back down to 255. Essentially, if you want this to be a longer transition out, then just increase the gap between those frames. So as you can see, we ramp up flash and then we slowly fade out of that. And that I think looks really good. And that is our first transition, the flash transition. Transition number two is going to build on the white flash and it is going to be a flash blur transition. Not the best name, but I think it works. So I'm just going to copy what we've done already, move that over here. So as you can see, we've got the flash and that works really well. But to take it to the next level, we're going to add a blur. So I'm just going to close down levels on these videos and I'm just going to search for Gaussian or Gaussian blur. So G-A-U-S-S. And that should be under blur and sharpen Gaussian or Gaussian blur. Drop that onto video layer one. We'll go to the end of that video again. So same process as the white flash. So we'll go to the very end minus one frame and we'll pull the blur in us all the way up to a higher number. So over 100 and create a brand new keyframe on blurriness. Then we're going to go maybe three or four frames to the left. And we'll pull that down to a smaller number, but not quite zero. And then same thing again, we'll go back five or six and go to zero. So you can see we're ramping up into the blurriness. And we'll drag the blur onto video two. Go to the very beginning, increase the blurriness to above 100 again. And then it's up to you how long you want to take to get out of this. Then we'll pull down to zero. And we've got the flash blur transition. Now it's really worth noting with this that you select repeat edge pixels. By default, it should be selected, but you can see by toggling it on and off how much of a difference it makes. So if I turn it off, you can see we get this vignette appear, which doesn't look great. Whereas when you select it, you turn it on, it does look a lot more clear. It's less distracting and it takes your eyes away from the edge of the frame and puts it back to where it's supposed to be, which is the center of the frame or the point of interest. Transition number three is going to be a whip pan. Now you can whip pan left to right, right to left, up, down, down, up. It's completely your call, but we're just going to go from screen left to screen right in this example. But the technique's the exact same depending on the direction. So there's going to be a little bit of an overlap on this one. So we're going to pull video layer two up and then we're going to go to the point where it transitions across. And we're going to count back maybe six or seven frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go seven. And we'll drag two over to the cursor. So there is a seven frame overlap between one and two. Now we'll select video one at that point where the next click cuts in and we'll create a brand new keyframe on the position. Then we'll go to the end of that clip, go to video layer two and create a brand new keyframe on the position. Now from here, we are just going to move over to the left to the very beginning of clip two. And we're just gonna use the position and pull this over to the left until it is just off screen. So we don't want to send it all the way over there because it won't look right. We want it to be literally just off screen by literally the skin of your teeth. So just there. And then when we play this back, you can see that whips in. But at the moment, it folds over that clip. So we want the bottom clip to slide as well. So to do that, 
we are just going to go to the very end minus one frame and move the position on the bottom layer over to the right and same thing again literally just a fraction off screen and then we're going to move that frame over to the end so because we moved one frame to the left we want to move it back to the end so when we play this back, you can see that slides across. Now at the moment, that was very quick. You kind of blink and you miss it. So maybe seven frames isn't the right option. Maybe we need to go for 12 or 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the bottom one over to the right an extra six frames. And we need to move all of these keyframes back to where they should be. So I'm going to move to the point where the second clip starts. Select video number one and move the left keyframe to the cursor. Then we'll do the same on two, but the opposite end. So we'll go to the end of the first clip, select two and drag the second keyframe over. So the in point and the end point are always at the exact same point in time. So if I hover over here on two, you can see I'm over the keyframe and on one, I'm over the keyframe. And again, at the end, I'm over the keyframe and on two, I'm over the keyframe. So they've always got to be matching. So they're always moving in sync with each other. And you can see that looks a lot better. Now, the problem is when you don't do this, you don't align them. Let's say this one does this, so we're out of sync. You can see one moves quicker than the other. Doesn't look great. Now, there's just one more thing that I need to do to clean this up, and that is to convert these linear boring keyframes into an ease in or an ease out keyframe. So on video layer one, I'm going to select both of those keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation, and we'll put ease out. And then we'll go to video layer two and we'll do the same thing. So highlight, right click, temporal, ease out. And you'll notice when we play this back, that animation now looks a lot better. Now, if you wanted to, you could ease out the first keyframe and ease into the second keyframe. So rather than ease out on both of them, let's go to the second keyframe on both layers. So on video layer one, we'll go to the second keyframe, right click, temporal, ease in. And then we'll do the same thing on two. So Second keyframe, right click, temporal, ease in. You can see it slightly changes the look of that animation. And an ease out or an ease in is exactly what it sounds like. So rather than just starting and stopping, it's easing in and easing out of those keyframes. So it just creates a softer, more fluid animation. That's all it's doing. But you can see by doing that, it has created this nicer transition. And that is transition number three. That is the whip pan or the video slide, depending on what you want to call it. Before we carry on with this video, let me please first just tell you about Motion Elements. Motion Elements are an amazing online platform for stock video, Adobe Premiere and After Effects templates, Notion templates, and so much more. And the great thing is I have teamed up with Motion Elements. They are the channel sponsor. And because of that, they are going to give you a really great discount on your first month of your subscription with them. So use the code in the description below to get yourself some big savings. So if you want to save time and create better videos, then consider checking out Motion Elements. Now, back to the video. Transition number four is going to be quite similar to transition number three in the sense that video is sliding, but instead of a slide or a push, we're going to rotate in. So it's a fold transition. So in order to do that, we are just going to control the rotation. But by default, when you control the rotation, it's going to do this. And that is because that is controlled by something called an anchor point. And an anchor point is basically just a point where the animation is controlled from. If I take this book, for example, let's say the anchor point is in the very center. When I control the rotation, it will spin around that point. But if I move this anchor point down to the bottom left, now when I control it, it's going to change the look of that rotation. And that's exactly how we are going to fuel this transition. We're going to move the anchor point from the very center of the frame to the corner of the frame. So if you select anchor point, which is this dot here, we're just going to move that dot down to the bottom left like this. And now if we pull the rotation to the left, you can see we can fold that out. So if we go to a negative number, so negative 90, it's now off screen. So if we go to the start of that video, create a brand new keyframe on rotation and then go 10 frames to the right and then pull that down to zero. If we play this back, you can see this is going to fold it in and that is the exact transition that we need. So. In order to make this a transition, we'll just drag video two onto layer two and just move that over. And as you can see, that's just folding in exactly where we need that to fold. Now, if you wanted the bottom layer to fold out at the same time, so a bit like the whip pan or the slide where one pushes another one, we can do that same process. So in order to do that, 
you just want to find the end keyframe, which is here, and we'll just match that up to the end of video layer one, which is there. Then on video layer one, we'll create a brand new keyframe on rotation at the start where video layer two comes in. And at the end of that, we're just going to rotate to 90 degrees. But we're going to go back in time and we are going to move the anchor point down to the bottom left again, which is here. And now when we play this back, you can see this happens. So as you can see, this is how this looks. And if you wanted to, then you could always stretch out this video. So just as it starts to transition here, we'll go to scale, we'll unlink uniform scale. Then we'll go to scale height at the start of the transition, select new keyframe. Then we'll go halfway through the transition and we'll increase the scale height all the way up until it fills the frame. So as you can see, you don't end up with that awkward black screen. It just ends up being completely full again. But that decision is completely up to you and your creativity. But that was transition number four. Transition number five is going to be a shape layer transition. Now there are loads of different variations of a shape layer transition. You've got circles, folds, you've got wipes. There's loads that you can do, but I'm going to show you quite a basic one to begin with, because then you can go ahead and watch this video up here and you can learn some more. But this transition is essentially just going to be as simple as getting your two video clips back to back like this. So one clip just runs into the next clip. Then we'll go into the project tab. We'll go new item, black video, press OK. Drag that onto video layer two. Then we can go ahead and change the color if we wanted to. So you could go to effects and search for tints and you can change the black by going into matte black two and change that to a color of your choice. So we could go for a nice blue, for example, or alternatively, you could search for ramp. And this is going to give you the option of having a gradient. So you can select the start color as a blue and the second color can be a slightly different shade of blue or maybe a purpley color and it creates a nice gradient rather than just a solid color. But to do this transition, you essentially just want to go to that transition point where the first clip ends and the second clip starts. We'll go back in time seven frames to the left. Go to motion, move the position of that solid over to the left. J again, literally just off screen. So just there. Brand new keyframe on position. Then we'll go back to the center. And remember when we went back seven, we want to go right seven now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we'll move this all the way to the right. Again, just off screen, not all the way, like all just about there. And now when we play this back, you can see we've got a nice transition effect happening. Of course, if that was too quick for you though, we'll just go back to the first keyframe. We'll go back in time three frames and move the keyframe to the cursor. But then we need to do the same on the other end. So go to the keyframe, one, two, three to the right and drag the second keyframe to the cursor. Now, when we play this back, you can see it's slowed it down a little bit. Now, it's always worth double checking that the transition happens when the screen is full like this, because if it's off by a few frames, then you end up with this awkward, clunky transition where the solid hasn't quite covered the two clips and you see them change and it just doesn't work as a transition. So always make sure that this is how it looks. And if you want to use this as a preset moving forward, then I recommend selecting the razor tool. So you can press C on the keyboard or select this, make a cut at the transition. And now every time you want to use this moving forward, you can just drag and drop this to wherever you need that to be. And it will always be perfectly in time as long as the cut on the transition matches the transition of the two clips. And there you go. That is transition number five. And that is the fifth and final transition of this video. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Hopefully you now know five really cool transitions that you can add to your project. And there are so many other transition videos that I have created on this channel. I've included a whole playlist just up here if you want to learn more about transitions in Premiere Pro. But hopefully this video was a great starting point for you. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in a future video. See you there.